This is the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz, hosted by Jeremy Jorgensen and presented by Gate City Bank. It's fun to be here. It's fun to be here. Fun to play these guys. Fun to be in this environment. Fun to test yourselves. Uh, we have great respect and admiration for the Bison and what they do. Welcome to the show, everybody. The Bison are 4-0 after a non-conference win against UC Davis. Head coach Matt Entz is here with us, and I want to congratulate you and your staff on a, on a win. That was a quality, quality opponent that came into the Fargo Dome, and great comments by their coach there, Dan Hawkins. And this was probably a tough prep and obviously a tough game. Oh, definitely. A uh, football team uh, that prides themselves on, on getting as many reps in as they can offensively. Uh, you know, their, their quarterback, Jake Meyer, was an excellent football player. They do a great job of trying to scheme you. I, I was really impressed with their defense. Uh, I thought they did a nice job of causing us some issues on some of our outside zone plays and uh, a well-coached football team that uh, uh, is, is definitely uh, worth the, the, the number four rating in, in the country. Before we get into the highlights, though, your young team showed some great composure in this game, didn't they? Well, we had to. There were some times there was some adversity. Uh, we had uh, one defensively, you know, we just had to be able to communicate with the tempo in which they were playing. Uh, offensively, we weren't clicking all the times. We had some tackles for losses that, that uh, negated maybe a couple first downs that we had put together. So uh, we, we never were hitting on all cylinders, but uh, our kids played hard throughout the entire game. No doubt. It's a great win. Let's roll through the tape. It's going to be a fun one to break down here. UC Davis has some good talent in their program. Bison won the toss, so the defense is out there first. It's a three and out. You get them into a punt situation. And boy, a really good special teams play to start us out here. Well, it, it, it's, it's something that we pride ourselves in. And, and Trevor Heights done a great job of being our punt returner. And, and just making one cut and getting north and south, we get connected with, with all the punt team. And, and this is a huge return to, to get the ball back to the 34-yard line to start the football game and get our offense a chance to score early. Their defense put you in a third and eighth, but a really good play here. Great time by the O-line. They, they continue to impress. Uh, our Rams do a great job, and protection is a big part of it. You know, they schemed the quarterback run well, but there were opportunities early. There were. Here, just a little you know, cute quarterback G, and a nice gain by Trey. You know, I thought the Rams did a nice job of blowing through here to get you up 7 nothing. It was. To, to get a score in that first drive and, and, and to make that punt return count, uh, that was big for our team. You know, the first two possessions for this powerful UC Davis offense were three and out, so you're back at it offensively right away and on the move again. Yep, just continue to pitch and catch and take the easy throws, and, and Trey did a nice job with that one. A lot of momentum changes in this game, weren't there? There were. You know, this was a, we had gotten a couple first downs, a, a misread by the quarterback, probably on a, a keep read, uh, and on, all of a sudden now you're in second and long. Boy, they were in fourth down a lot, and they went for it a lot. Did you expect that? We did. Uh, that was something that uh, they had shown previously in, in, in film, that if they crossed the 50, they were going to use all four downs, and uh, we just had to expand our third down package for the week. I'll bet in scout, their big tight end showed up. He's a good player. He is. He's a big, long kid. Uh, we had communicated uh, with some other staffs, and everyone said he was one of their best football players. Well, the momentum was with UC Davis, but the momentum flipped a lot, as I mentioned, and here's a momentum flip for the Bison on a huge hit. Yeah, again, Jabril, uh, it, it's not fair for guys in the slot to try to block him. He does such a great job of creating separation and getting off blocks. Well, the Bison offense was off the field, a little stagnant right at this point of the game, so the Aggies are back on, and they get a, a wide receiver loose up the boundary. They do. We, we, we bump each other off on a scissors concept over in the boundary, and, and uh, the, the inside receiver got turned loose. They do score a touchdown here, but it gets called back, and it's the right play. You see the, the receiver was well past the line of scrimmage here, so some guys are downfield. It is. The offensive linemen were downfield, uh, ineligible player. Uh, and again, if, if he catches that two yards uh, behind the line of scrimmage, it's probably a touchdown. So, uh, great job by the refs. Yeah, and it's also a great job to force a field goal here. Boy, forcing three and not allowing seven was a big deal in this game overall. Oh, it was. There, there was numerous trips down there where, uh, you know, if you give up seven, it becomes a, a, a tough, tougher game. Boy, there were some big plays with the power run. There was, and, and probably wish we would have called it a few more times, but we did have some uh, explosive plays off our gap scheme yesterday. You know, Trey Lance, he's just so savvy for a freshman uh, coming up here after the big run. He gets to the edge and, and just keeps his legs moving. Well, it's, it's playing through the whistle. And, uh, you know, they never, you know, elbow wasn't down, knees were never down. And, and just to continue to find a way to get in the end zone, what a great play by him. You know, their quarterback, tough kid. He took a lot of hits. The, the stats don't show all the hits, but I'll tell you, here's a pressure right here, and it forces a mistake. 
It is. You mean, got a guy right in his face and on his toes, and he kind of lofts one up there. But, you know, big disruption by our defensive line and a great opportunity to, to get a pick and, and get our offense back on the field. Well, the UC Davis offense continued to uh, let it rip on fourth down. Here's another fourth down here for UC Davis. Yep. I, again, you know, probably playing too, too soft a coverage on a fourth down situation. Uh, but he's too good a quarterback to give him that much space. Force three again. Their kicker uh, was pretty good. Their special teams overall were pretty good. They were solid. You know, the, the one thing you noticed, they did a lot of sky kicks on kickoffs. So I, I, they must have, after that first return, I don't think they wanted to test us again. Hey, this was a really good two-minute drill right before half. It was. And, and here you saw us get into a little bit of a bunch. We knew we could get him into some zone, and what a great throw to Jimmy Kaporis along the sideline. Now oh, Griffin Krosa continues to kick it well. Uh, kid has confidence, and he's doing what we expect him to do, and coming in there and banging him through, and you see right there, everyone's excited right before the half to get points. Yeah, that was a big lifter uh, going into the halftime, no doubt, on our NODAC Insurance halftime stat board. North Dakota State 17-13. It was a battle there in the first half. Yards are similar. As you see, the Bison did a good job on third and fourth down, though, just three of 12. For UC Davis, the Bison, three of seven. Before we get to the second half, let's get to know James Hendricks a little. This is Would You Rather with the 2019 Bison, presented by Gate City Bank. Would you rather go fishing or hunting? Fishing. Would you rather go skydiving or cliff diving? Oh, boy. Skydiving. Would you rather go camping or stay in a hotel? Hotel. Would you rather shovel snow or swap mosquitoes? Swap mosquitoes. Would you rather swim in a pool or a lake? Lake, for sure. Would you rather drive or fly when you're going somewhere? Fly. Would you rather walk 10 miles or go to the dentist? I'll go to the dentist. <laughs> Would you rather bite your tongue while eating something or step on a Lego? Ooh, step on a Lego. I don't like biting my tongue. <laughs> Would you rather sit on a beach or a cruise ship? Beach. Would you rather confront an alligator or a bear? Ooh. I would rather confront a alligator. Okay. Would you rather be thirsty or hungry? Hungry. Would you rather sit in a tractor all day or an office? Uh, office. Would you rather watch a movie at home or go to the theater? Home. Would you rather drink coffee in the morning or juice? Coffee. Would you rather eat candy corn or cotton candy? Cotton candy. Well, Coach, at halftime, this looked like it was going to be a four-quarter fight. Uh, what was the message to the guys? Well, we needed to just to have some more consistency on the offensive side of the football. And, uh, you know, I, I, I told uh, the defense and Code Green that if they don't score in the second half, they're not going to win, and so we needed just to play a little bit better, keep the ball in front of us, and uh, we still need to continue to limit explosive plays. Yeah, no doubt. Let's roll the second half tape here, and uh, the Bison got the ball to start the third quarter, which is a big deal, but the second play, momentum changes again continued here in the second half. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, great pitch and catch out there, and just, you know, we, we got to do a better job of ball security, and uh, I know uh, Christian was frustrated at that moment, but... Uh, uh, nice job by the defense coming up here. You know, monster effort uh, by Code Green. So you're in a third down and a fourth down. This is a great sequence by Code Green. It is a great tackle right there, just short of the first down on third down. And then coming up with the fourth down stop was, was critical. And like you said, you take the momentum back, and, and uh, now our offense can get back on the field and make something happen. You know, Christian Watson, I thought, did a good job of rebounding from the mistake. Very next drive, he's making plays. He is. This is uh, probably about three or four plays into the drive, but he had two catches on his drive. So that tells you, you know, Trey has a ton of trust and faith in his receivers. You know, much like the Bison, the UC Davis defense, I guess, tip your cap. They, they did uh, bend, but they didn't break and force field goals. They did. we we got to continue to improve it as they're scoring touchdowns in the red zone offensively. It's a seven-point game right now, third and four. Just uh, This is where the quarterback shows, uh, you know, a good play, good read. He has this team in the right play. He, he got us in the right place. We, we just don't do a great job at corner keeping the cup and turn a, you know, what, an eight, nine-yard play into a 15-yard play. I'll tell you, their receiver, number two, Harrell, good player. 12 catches, 102 yards. Yep, really good player. I mean, they got skill kids, and, and they do a good job of, of spreading the ball around. 
They didn't kick it a lot, but when they did, this kid uh, was just money, wasn't he? He was. Yeah, the, the great, again, you said it earlier, they have an excellent uh, special teams. You know, fourth quarter, uh, you know, overall they ran 80 plays and 11 play drive here to start the fourth quarter, so they were getting some chunks here at this point of the game. They were. They were able to run the football a little bit better than what you had anticipated, and I don't know if it was a you know, the fact we were getting a little bit tired or just, you know, not playing as well as we should, but we, we did kind of, you know, get our composure and, and create a big play down in the red zone. You know, 12 yards uh, here. There was a 15-yard uh, late hit on the quarterback as well, but th this is building up to a massive point in the game. They're in the red zone here. Yeah, here's a, a third down little shovel pass back to their tight end off the power sweep look, uh, which brings up a huge, uh, I think it ultimately brings up a huge fourth down play. What's the coverage here? This is just a, a cover two, but we're we're dropping a safety down to be the flat defender instead of the corner, and uh, always ask that safety to stay inside the slant of one. And, and Michael does a great job of keying eyes and making a big play for us. You know, sometimes on a turnover, you're you're pinned up against your your back end there, and uh, you have to get out of that and get yourself some breathing room. We do, and uh, you know, our goal is always to get a couple first downs, at least give ourselves some space where if we do end up having to punt, we're, we're flipping the field a little bit. And, here you see a couple of great runs by our backs and, and great push by our offensive line. This was a dangerous edge throw right here, but enough zip on it uh, to where they did not get it. Yeah, just, you know, probably, uh, I don't know if Trey didn't see him out there, but the one that you're, you're glad they dropped, though. You know, flip the field, though, that was the big deal and set up another stage for Code Green. It is, uh, you know, another batted pass, and this one we were able to come up on a pick. And Cole Cars, what a, a steady player he is at three technique force. You know, on backbreaker, power continued to work right here. It did. And, and like I said earlier today, uh, you know, maybe it was a, we could have called it a few more times. It was just such a successful play for us. Trey Lance runs over their defensive back. Wow, at power. Big physical kid. I mean, everyone knows. And uh, uh, he wasn't going to be denied. I think you saw a little bit of frustration on the day from Trey right there. We're going to show the one sack of the day because we end on a sack, uh, but I don't think it tells the tale of the pressure that he was under all day just having one sack. There was a lot of hurries in this one. There were a lot of hurries, a lot of people getting up in his face. Uh, we, we needed to do that because you didn't see many other teams able to apply pressure to him during the course of the year. Well, that's a tremendous win by NDSU. That's a top five team the Bison were playing, 27-16. So credit the coaches, credit the players. That's a really, really good win. Total yards there, points off turnovers. Boy, the Bison did a good job there, a plus seven in a close game. Boy, that uh, can really flip things over in your favor. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. We're a tough team, uh, especially, you know, in the past game. Uh, just just kept competing. Uh, O-line dominated once again. Uh, you know, I think that really showed, you know, our eight or nine yards a, a carry on power and, and our punch stuff. So, you know, they dominated up front, but, you know, we just got to keep working, keep getting better. We prepare for red zone situations all the time, every week, regardless what we see. You know, we, we got to be ready for it. And, you know, that stuff helps. Like, what you do in practice translates to the game. So, definitely seeing that helped us. We do what we can. We try to affect the quarterback as much as possible. Even if it's not sacks, just, just touches. We talk about touches. Every time you touch the quarterback, it's in the back of his mind. Like, um, by the end of the game, those add up and they start throwing up balls. So, you know, I, I feel confident still, uh, really confident, you know, with our offense and with the guys we have uh, and in myself still. You know, I just you can't have your best game every game. You know, we're going to continue to get better. The Bison get everybody's best shot. That was a great comment by Trey right there. Well, there were some great individual plays by the Bison yesterday, but the player of the game, we went with a home run hitter on offense. The player of the game, presented by Nodak Insurance Company. Ty Brooks rushed for 100 yards in a game that yards were hard to come by. His explosive 57-yard run in the first half set up a big touchdown. He says a lot of his runs were on the play the Bison are known for. Yeah, we didn't have a, uh, a great game offensively, I would say. Uh, defense bailed us out time and time again. Power is a big play for us. And the thing about power is you know what we're going to do. They were calling it out, but you can't stop it, and that's NDSU football. I think that's an interesting comment. Uh, UC Davis was recognizing it was coming, but uh, it happens on a weekly basis. The opponent knows power is coming, but it's, it's hard to stop. It's been a staple of our offense for a number of years and, and something that we pride ourselves on and is running the A-gap power and, and doing it better than everybody else. And uh, it is a play that takes time and, and great defensive scheme to be able to run fit and, and stop. Well, let's uh, look at some of the individual players through four games. Michael Tutsi, I think, is playing at a high, high level. 
you look at all of his stats, he leads the team in tackles. He's got the, the four interceptions. He's doing a really good job. What do you like about how he plays the game? Well, he's a head, headsy player and uh, uh, very intelligent, very uh, uh, gifted at just seeing the field, understanding spacing and understanding uh, where the quarterback's going to go with the football. And uh, he continues to develop as a leader back there, too. His communication skills and, and working with guys like James. James Hendricks and Robbie a year ago have really paid off. Yeah, you can tell he's been around the game a lot. He grew up with the game, didn't he? He did. His dad's a college football yeah. coach, and, and that always helps, I believe. Quarterback pressure, I think, through four games has been uh, really good. I think it was big in this game. I think it's going to be big in the next game against Illinois State. But you look at the constant hits that you get on, I even in the stat sheet, one sack. But look at all these hits that piled up on uh, Mayer. Well, they, they, they take, uh, you know, they take a tick. Uh, a toll on a quarterback and again I, I love Cole Carson he says it's all about touches and getting touches on the quarterback and I think even the, the pick to Jabril was a, a situation where the ball was thrown a little bit high and late down the middle and, and a big play ended up you know and uh, Mayer kept getting up uh, credit to him but the guys kept coming after him and I think in the end uh, it, it really built up on him well it did uh, he, he's an excellent football player yeah. and, and we knew that going into the game but I think the fact that we were able to play so many guys up front and we continue to try to get fresh legs in there and, and generate a pass rush was critical you know the special teams uh, overall through four games uh, you know I think there were some things in the Delaware game that were fixed this week and the guys rebounded well but overall you talk about Griffin Crosey he's doing a great job he is. He's uh, uh, very confident for a, for a freshman right now, uh, understands his role, understands what we're expecting him to do. Uh, you know, and, and we're still trying to identify what his range is. And then, of course, here's a clip of you know, Trevor Height, young man who, who started to reduce some returning for us a year ago and, 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 and just understands our scheme and, and understands that, hey, I got to get north and south. And if I can get a first down on every return, I've helped the offense. Yeah, I thought a really good special teams day uh, against Davis for the Bison. Uh, that unit coming together, four games uh, certainly helps. I think this year, having a 12-game year, four games does prepare you and, and lets you develop some roles like Trevor Height. Always trying to find where, where guys, what their purpose is, is the kind of the term I use. And once guys identify their purpose, I think then they have greater performance. No doubt. Uh, well, the Bison are doing some great things off the field, folks. Ben Ellison's one of them. Many of the guys on the team, though, you don't even have to ask them. They just do it on their own. We're going to have a story that'll uh, make you feel good about what the Bison are doing. Stay with us. Well, there are a lot of great guys on the Bison football team, guys that often give their time to help the community. Ben Ellison of Hawley is a prime example, and this week he was honored for his service. Today's Bison football feature story is presented by Olaf Anderson Construction. As Ben Ellison and a few of his Bison teammates mingled with the students at Robert Asp Elementary in Moorhead, cameras were there to capture the moment he was presented with his award being named to the All-State American Football Coaches Association Good Works team. It's pretty special, you know, we talk about it a lot um, at NDSU, just trying to give back to the community, be involved, um, you know, because these, these kids get excited seeing things like this and um, just, just means a lot um, to be on this list. Ellefson is one of 22 student athletes across all divisions of college football to be named to the team. No, I'm not. Are you? After the demands of college and football, Ben still finds time to volunteer with schools, hospitals, as well as participating in food drives, among other things, in the Fargo-Moorhead area. Whenever those, those opportunities arise, just try to, to, try to make the time to, to do it because I know it's special. Now, while there were cameras there to capture the moment Thursday, it's unusual. We don't require our kids to, to go out and do community service. They do it because they believe in it. They see the value in it. And a lot of times you ask them, they get more out of it than hope. a lot of times the people that they're dealing with, they learn so much. And so um, it's a great honor because I think it is a symbol of not just what Ben's doing, but what all of our student athletes are doing. Ben says the motivation for his volunteering and helping young kids comes from his own experience as an elementary student who would look forward to NDSU football stars coming to visit his class. But he also says it's a mindset the Bison coaching staff has instilled in him. Coach Anson, Coach Kleiman have done a really good job of, of pushing us to do things in the, in the community, you know, become uncomfortable um, in those situations to help yourself grow. When it really comes down to it, the recognition on a national stage is nice, but Ben and his teammates aren't doing it for a trophy or a plaque. Ben sees the appreciation from the kids he's helping. Anytime you can give, give back and, and make kind of make their day, you know, um, it's pretty cool. And they help him in return. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Alex Egan. Hey, you.
My kids are in elementary school. They get a, a big kick out of stuff like that. But uh, I think it's true that the players themselves, they, they're rewarded by it as well by just being around the kids. Oh, I, I definitely would agree. Uh, the smiles, the, the excitement that our players bring to, the, to those groups when they show up is, is <laughs> second to none. And so always fun to be able to be involved in those moments. Yeah, no doubt. Well, in our look ahead to the future, uh, the, the future is now with uh, certain players. Uh, the Bison have a young running back who is making an immediate impact. The future crop of Bison, presented by Peterson Farms Seed. Kobe Johnson is a young man out of Georgia. He was a sprinter in high school, and you can see that burst here with the Bison. He said he knew coming in he needed to be ready, and there would be opportunity for playing time. They told me during recruiting, you know, just be ready to compete, you know, so I came in with that mindset to be, be ready to compete. And, you know, learning the offense as quick as I could was huge for me. You know, I studied the formation, you know, being with the ones, working with the ones, seeing how fast they move, it helped with learning the process as well. He's playing well early, isn't he? He is. He has a ton of confidence. Uh, he has that burst that you talked about. And he's done a great job of learning the playbook. A lot of that needs to uh, be give Dan Larson, our running back coach, has done a great job of, of taking Kobe under his wing. And so is Ty Brooks and, and Adam Cofield. Those guys have given him a lot of the details that only uh, people who've played the position a lot would know. Well, a bye week is coming up for the buys, and then Illinois State will talk about it. Stay with us. Coach, it's probably a good time for a bye week, just a, even a mental break. What's more big, a physical or mental break for these guys? Oh, I think there's a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, I think right now, just with some of our young kids getting stepping back a little bit and going back to the beginning and reinstalling some things, making sure that they truly understand what we're doing from a schematic standpoint, uh, always trying to get as healthy as we can. Uh, we have eight more games, and uh, as I told the players at the end of the or after the game, this is going to be our toughest part of the season coming up, of course. Yep, Illinois State's the next opponent for sure, and Illinois State's had a pretty good non-conference. They're 3-1 and one in our Verizon look ahead, and it's on the road, and they're always a tough opponent. They always are. Coach uh, Spack does a great job. Physical team, mm -hmm. uh, always have a, a back that you have to be worried about, and they do this year again with James Robinson. So uh, we're going to have to have use this week to continue to prep, and uh, it'll be a big challenge for us on the road. Congratulations. Uh, the Bison are 4-0. Enjoy it, everybody. Enjoy that bye week. We will see you again after the Illinois State game on the, that road game. Have a great week, everybody. Let's go, Bison!